Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel, my name is Cordant and we are back to continue our playthrough of Pillars of Eternity with the Triple Crown difficulty settings. So, in the previous episode, all of my characters leveled up after a very, very large fight, uh, but we are all safe, thank you. Um, you should be off. Uh, so, like I do usually, in between episodes I went and checked out every single one of the level ups so that I can now do them without wasting a lot of time deciding. So, let's do just that. We're gonna start with Mr. Eder. In terms of skills, he already has the maximum I need for survival, which is the double damage reduction and double the, um, the healing multiplier bonuses. I will probably just stick with this one, but if there's ever a time I feel like I need more healing, I have that option. So no more survival is needed. Uh, he doesn't need anything else, so honestly I'm just gonna keep pumping points into athletics for, you know, extra heals in emergency situations. So right now I cannot level athletics, we're just gonna skip. As for our talents, this is gonna be very easy. We're gonna go into defensive and we're gonna pick Bull's Will. This is his weakest defense, it's Will. Uh, there's not really anything else that would benefit us greatly. We could argue against something like uh, Unstoppable or the Mental Fortress, you know, even body control to make sure we are safer against these kind of effects. But I prefer just buffing up the base defense first and then consider the other ones. So Bull's Will to improve our weakest defense and that's done. Very easy. Mr. Kana. Similar situation in terms of skills, no more need for survival, so I'm just going to be putting points into athletics. And now we have access for uh, to level 3 invocations. So let's go over them one by one. We have Gurnisk's Beast lit the night with his breath. This one will summon a drake to fight for you for 30 seconds. Oh, but not, but knock not on the door of Erdel and Girdle, I like the name. And this one will summon two ogres for 30 seconds. Rise again, rise again, Scions of Adon. This will revive all of your friends in this area and cone. Not really very interesting. Uh, I don't think we need it all that much. And we have our priest for that effect if we need it. Seven nights she waited while the white winds wept. This is actually interesting. Attacks enemies in seven directions around the chanter with bolts of freezing ice. And this actually deals a fair amount of damage. The, the key factor in this invocation is that it says enemies so it doesn't target friends but in order to maximize the effectiveness of this spell Kana would need to be completely surrounded and that's not really his job. He's here as a secondary tank like an off tank. Uh, it there is going to be the one taking the brunt of the enemies so this wouldn't really fit. If you were a main tank I might consider this for fun even though it's still not better than the other options. And finally, we have two very nice buffs. The Bride caught their ruse and said to make them pay. Empowers allies in the area of effect with bonuses to dexterity, perception and intellect. So 4.62 meters, 90 degree cone. All of the friends in the area. Plus 5 to dexterity, perception and intellect for 44 seconds. This is a massive boost. And it also affects the caster. So very, very nice. Uh, in most situations, if I just turn Kana, uh, Kana around and use this, I can hit every single member of my party with the exception of it there. Quite nice. The Brightman slew 30 before they crossed half the hall. Exactly the same thing as the one above, but it affects Might, Constitution and Resolve instead. So, I like both of these, uh, preferably this one, but the main... Um, comparison here, especially in our difficulty settings, is between this buff, or these buffs, and this one over here. The damage coming out from the ogres isn't the more interesting thing, but just having extra bodies on the battlefield for enemies to focus on is always a very nice thing to have. So, I think that for now my first choice is going to be this one, and if I get an extra choice of level 3 invocations, I will probably go for the Bright Caught Their Ruse. For now, let's go for the Ogres. It's also fun seeing the Ogres around the battlefield. <laughs> as for our talents, same deal as Eder. Let's buff our weaker defense, which is Will. So, 
that's what we're gonna do. And he is done. For Mr. Durance. Um, for this guy, I might consider going for extra survival points to get the double bonus in accuracy. But since he has been getting targeted a fair bit more in these recent episodes, I'm actually going to give him two points in athletics first. Just so I can heal him up if I need to. Next up, in terms of talents, there are multiple good choices here. There's not just a choice I'm going to make. There's a couple of them which are very valid. I like Aggrandizing Radiance, buffing up my Priest uh, for 13.5 seconds in every single stat is quite lovely. Uh, bonus spells, also very useful, but I think I prefer to have more of a passive buff than just either of these. Uh, that's just my personal preference. So I'm actually going to be going into defensive and I'm going to be going into weapon and shield style. Like I've mentioned previously, he's not doing a lot of damage with his auto attacks. That, that's not his function. His purpose is to cast spells and stay alive. So, for casting spells, if he has a wand or not, doesn't make a difference. This isn't Harry Potter. <laughs> um, so he can just cast whatever spell he wants while using a, a more defensive setup. So, we're going to go for weapon and shield style because... We're going to get the extra deflection from the shield by swapping our weapons. We're going to get extra deflection from this talent. And we are also going to get extra reflex defense by getting this talent as well. So it's kind of a, a three-in-one change here for Mr. Durance. So that's going to be my choice. Making him extra safe. And we can also see how this works. Because I have some items here which we're going to use which is a hatchet and this tiny shield. So the hatchet is the choice because the hatchet has extra deflection and we don't need anything else. He's not going to be attacking. And let's just make a comparison here. So he's sitting at 50 deflection and 52 reflex. And by swapping this, we're going to go up to 67 deflection. And you should have increased... Why aren't you increasing? Did I pick the wrong talent? No, it's here. The shield's deflection bonuses are increased and grant an equal bonus to the cursor reflex. Uh, is it because the game is paused? Yes. <laughs> okay, it is. It is. The game was paused and wasn't registering the change. Okay, so, <laughs> like I was saying, we go from from 50 deflection and 52 reflex to 73 deflection and 70 reflex. This is a massive boost to our defenses here. Very, very good. The, the main problem really with having Durance with this setup is that I can no longer do something like this and send everybody to attack because I don't want them in the front lines. And the other thing I wanted to mention is... Um, the reason why I'm not giving Durance a large shield is because of this penalty right here, the 8 accuracy penalty. This might seem like it only affects attacks, but it also affects spells. It's not obvious, it's something that the game doesn't, isn't very good at explaining, but the penalty does affect spells. And I will never want anything on my characters, my spellcasting characters, that affects spell accuracy. I want as much accuracy as possible. So, this will be our new setup for Mr. Durance here. And next up we have the Grieving Mother. The Grieving Mother is already at 10 survival, so she has a double bonus from accuracy. So right now, we can go for something else like ability to read level 2 scrolls and more athletics for the same reason as before, emergency healing purposes. As for our powers, I'm gonna go for the Ringleader. Uh, foe target dominated and everything around it is charmed. Could be cool. And in terms of talents, again, we have some cool choices here. We have greater focus, which means she can uh, that her max focus is increased, but it also means she will start fights with more focus available. And this can be a very big deal. We also have Apprentice's sneak attack, which more damage for her. And we do want sneak attacks enabled, especially because of my rogue. 
And then we have other choices like Marksman for extra accuracy against distant enemies. And we also have Gunner for extra reload speed. So up until this point, I feel like we've had enough focus points for whatever we need to do. So I am not yet going to go for greater focus. I might do it later. I am instead going to go for extra accuracy with our attacks. So she does a big burst of damage with her um, blunderbuss. And I want to try and maximize that. So let's go for more accuracy here. She's done. Now for our tiny mustache man. Um, survival, I'm not going to be putting any more points into it. Because it would need a very large investment to go to the double accuracy bonus. And mechanics really have been the, the main point of danger in our run so far. So I want to maximize mechanics or at least put it at 10 before I put points in anything else. Because I was actually considering putting an extra point into stealth. But I'm just going to conserve these for more mechanics on the next level up. Next up, for talents. My considerations here are between Shadowing Beyond to make sure that the Mr. Rogue can be extra safe. He can go invisible, he can go very far away from the fight and then just start shooting from safety. And the other main contender here is Bloody Slaughter. So 20% of hits converted to crits against targets with low endurance and it also gives us a 0.5 uh, to crit damage multiplier against targets with low endurance. I think, honestly, the safe choice is Shadowing Beyond. There's no doubt about this, naturally. But I have Escape and I haven't really been in that much danger with my Rogue with our current skills. So I think I'm just going to go for the offensive here and go into Bloody Slaughter to help out. I, I wish I knew what low endurance means. I, I need to check this out before the next video to, to understand what this means. Is it 25%? Is it 50%? I don't know. But right now, let's go for Bloody Slaughter as a passive buff to our damage. And finally, we have Mr. Aloth here. So, Mr. Aloth, he has 11 points stored up. I could, just like the other characters, go up a little bit in athletics for uh, emergency healing. But since we're actually not that far away from getting the double accuracy bonus, I'm going to go for this one. So, I'm going to save points until we get 10 in survival, and then I'll probably just go for athletics. Next up, in terms of our spells, I'm going to go for the Wall of Force. Having anybody coming into the fight hobbled and taking crushing damage is very nice. It also enables sneak attacks and it constantly interrupts enemies standing in the wall. So, very, very cool. And it's also um, party friendly. My characters will not get hit by this. That's the wall force. Now, for talents. We have some interesting options here. We have the defensive option of Arcane Veil, which is very, very good. Instantly get plus 50 def deflection points for 14 seconds. Um, we have bonus spells, which is, again, also nice. We have Apprentice's Sneak Attack. Same reasoning as, my, as the Grieving Mother. Extra damage. And then we also have the Marksman Talent. And possibly Bloody Slaughter, but I think I would prefer just Accuracy at the start. So, those are my main choices, but so far he hasn't been having a lot of trouble with Accuracy. So I am simply going to go for the Apprentice's Sneak Attack damage. And I'm going to hope that my defensive spells that I have in my Grimoire are going to cover the need that Arcane Veil would also cover. So, Sneak Attack damage. We're going to continue with this. And that's all for the level ups. Mm. Okay, yeah. pretty cool. So, we were just about to finish the seventh level of the Endless Paths of Odd Nua. We, we activated every single one of the pillars. We did Kana's quest. And we now have this pedestal to interact with. Which hopefully doesn't spawn enemies. Nope, it just opens the door. Alright then. And it's probably the way down. Yes, it is. Okay. 
So I am going to go investigate the lower level, but I make no guarantees that I'm actually going to clear it. <laughs> because this level is dangerous. It's, if I remember this right, it's much more dangerous ahead. than the previous levels. Okay, so we have traps, so let's let's be careful here. I'll see it done. Yeah, another one over there. It's finished. This is some nice experience though. Whoa, back up. <laughs> okay. Some skeletal enemies. That's that's not my hey. my main concern. I am concerned about this. The Fampiers. I don't remember fully what they do but i think they can dominate on hit or they have a domination uh, spell i didn't want to spoil myself even though i probably should and go to the wiki to check what they actually do but let's not step on traps please following your lead hey uh but i do remember them being dangerous and these fights can be problematic so that's why i want to be extra careful in this level with these i can deal with uh, yeah, again, so Durance, do not go in there. Everybody else can shoot. Yep. But I want my ranged characters to focus on that guy. Or maybe just you. You two can just focus on this one. Uh, let's knock him down, please. Okay, he stuns. Stunned again. I love it. And dead. Okay. So I wanted to clear these before I went into this area. And what does the flame reveal? Because if trouble happens with the vampires, I, I want to make sure that I'm not get, going to get backstabbed by these guys. Okay. And let's let's try to remember once again hey. what the vampires do. So I'm going to be careful. I'm going to be playing it slow hey. and checking the combat log. So we have ghouls, dark ghouls, and the vampir. Okay. You're gonna come into the choke point. Okay. So, combat started. Let's turn on slow mode. Let's put you like this. And let's see what the guy does. Combusting wounds is whatever. We have extra spell casters. Skeletal wizards. Yeah, I think I think this is the dominate spell. This symbol right here. So I'm gonna turn on my vigorous defense. And do I have something against domination? That's what I want to know. Uh, I never remember what this is. Give me a second. I think no. This is dazed and confused. Immune to blind, hobbled, frightened, distracted, dazed, confused, prone, stuck, sickened. Not against domination, though. Hobbled and stuck. No. This is dazed. I don't think I have anything against domination. Well, let's hope that this isn't actually domination, it's something else like mm. confusion. Okay, Vigorous Defense is on. Uh, you can actually start buffing us. And then tossing this into there. You are gonna place a Chill Fog over there. Okay. And we are gonna start shooting. Okay, there, there it comes. Vampire activates Charm. So yeah, I think it will charm. Let me just make sure if I have something for charm and not domination. Days and confused, prone. Days and confused. No, I have nothing against charm. So this can be problematic. And there we go. Did you crit? No, it hit. Ugh, 11 seconds, wonderful. 77 focus points, very good. Uh, I believe Darghouls are immune to mind-affecting stuff, like Domination, because they're undead. 
Let me just make sure. Immune to dominate. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so nothing there. So what could I do here? I can try and make some space by stunning this one. Yeah, I think so. Okay. Okay, the good thing is that if there, since he is far away from my party, he swaps to, <laughs> to his ranged weapon, which is kind of silly, but it works, so... Okay, so you guys shoot over there. Oh, they're coming through, though. Yeah, that's, that's the main problem with getting dominated, is that characters will just go over my tank. Okay, so come over here, Kana. Off tank moment to shine. I'm actually gonna swap my stun to the Vampire because he's getting closer. You are gonna toss. Ugh. No, you are just gonna shoot the Vampire. Let's blind the Vampire. And. That's it. You see? You see? This bitch. Yeah, they, they are liking to focus firing my priest a lot more. God damn! You got paralyzed. Well, this is not going very well. Okay, a grieving mother. I would like that stun right about now, please. Okay, okay. It's it's time to. It's time to start doing some things here. They are immune to dominate. Are they also immune to confusion? I would expect them to. Yes, they are. God damn it. Tentacles! I need more bodies on the field. She is stunned for 5 seconds, which is good. I am gonna swap you for some extra deflection because she is surrounded. And just focus on this guy. Let's get Holy Radiance to heal and damage the vessels. And you keep on shooting the Vampire. Okay, good. Well, you can fight, why not? Or get us some damage reduction here. And then fight. Okay, so she has more spell focus. Okay, help out, please. Okay. No, 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 this one. And she is about to get out of her stun, so I'm gonna stun it again when I can. Like... Now. And you are going to book this region, because it's going to hit all three of the enemies. Okay. Dude, uh, hit that. Why are you taking so much damage, man? Oh, he's back, he's back, he's back, he's back. So go over there. No, no, I said over there. Okay, just stay here then. He can't actually move that much. <laughs> okay, hit that. She is stunned again, but for less time. She's only injured. Okay. I think I can take off slow mode now. I don't like the fact that he's blocked. Let me see if I can kill this guy quickly. Or if I can pull that one. Well, that works. Can you... Can you reach this? Maybe. Okay, the vampire is focusing on the tentacle, once again proving that summons are useful for that effect. And I think we're fine right now. Okay, okay, she, this bitch is still alive. Nuke her! Go over there and knock this one down. Oh, she's stunned. <clears throat> so yeah, this is this is why I am afraid of this area. This is why. Okay. Still, everybody is fine. And now I kind of want to explore more. This is my main problem with going into dangerous areas, is that if they are indeed dangerous, well, if I can get through the first part, I want more. Okay, I fully expect vampires over here. So let's be very careful. I'm just checking for traps. 
and or hidden items. Yep, there's a vampire. The good thing about this is that they usually don't put that many vampires in the same place. But I, I still wouldn't trust my memory on that. Okay. I feel nervous about being alone. This is just a, oh. Ahead. Uh, can you see me if I pick this up? <sighs> mm. I don't. I. I want the item. <laughs> hey. I want the item. God damn it. Okay. Well, I think we're gonna have an extra fight here just because I want hey. the item. Some of you may call this foolish. Yes. I would say you are completely correct. <laughs> hey. But I want the item. So, <clears throat> that's what's gonna happen. Let me see if I can pick it up without yes. being spotted first. As you wish. Don't. No, no. And there's also not much of a choke point here, so I gotta be super duper extra careful. Hey. Okay. So you're gonna go in front. You're gonna focus the vampire naturally. <clears throat> Let's see if we can actually burst down the vampire before he does anything dangerous. And I will <coughs> kick this off with a blind. Uh, I will kick it off with a prone and then a vigorous defense. And I think that's mostly it. Except I want you to move forward a bit as well. Yeah, I will want a blindness here. Oh, here comes the charm. Uh, let's pray that we can get this. Oh my god, I forgot I didn't swap the weapon. Back up! Who are you charming? Who are you charming? You? Bitch, oi charmed Kana. Ha! <laughs> Kana is my <laughs> is the worst thing you can target, I think. Okay, so bouncing missiles, that's fine. Well, but he wasted his charm, so I am very happy about that. We have the blindness going out from Aloth. Let's start getting some books in here. And keep on focusing the vampire. Okay, he's getting shot. Okay, there goes a blast. Wow, he didn't. Why did you shoot the... Oh my god, I think I mistargeted. I meant to target him. Oh well. Okay, so is there something better than just stunning this guy? I don't think there is. Oh, I could steal damage reduction. But I... Okay, I'm gonna stun first. And then I'm gonna try and steal damage reduction once we have some more focus points. Okay, so you... Are gonna move up. Oh god, let's slow this down. You can trust me. Okay, and now we can heal. You're still fine. Okay, good, very good. Back up a bit. Yeah, so these two are annoying, but I gotta kill this one ASAP. So he's my main focus. And you are already shooting over here, right? Yes, you are. Okay, so what can I do to help? I can do this and this. Yeah, let's let's do it. Why not? And then just shoot. You son of bitchy. Leave my friend alone. Okay, go and tank him. Let's let's back up here. You can also tank a Dargul. That's mostly fine. Uh, you have the LTD selectivity of motion, good. Go for this, and then shoot that. That's what I want. Okay, a good stun from Grieving Mother. Actually, this might have been overkill with Aeloth, but... Okay, so let's... Nuke! There we go. 
good damage. I could have a Sacre Blue, but I think I want to show off the Ogres if I can. Jesus Christ, woman. How much did you... Oh, it only shows the pellets because he died before the full hit. Okay, well, he's done. Let's go over here and focus this guy. He's gonna fall very quickly as well. And now all of my ranged characters will start killing the wizard. You can swap to your pistol. And I'm just hoping for the... Yeah, for my Ugris. Yes! This effect is kind of blinding, but... Eh. Okay. Let's, let's see how they handle themselves. Blam! It's not bad, actually. They are very slow. Yeah, but they, they smash hard, actually. Okay, cool. Vampire down. Let's see if it was worth it. Was definitely not worth it. Oh, what Let's is it? Check for more traps. Yee! Okay, that's another beetle. Not yo 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 yo. Nearly, nearly gotta fight that, but it's fine. With, with other beetles, I'm fine right, engaging, then. honestly. So let's just kill these. Uh, you shouldn't have shot first, but... Because now they... Yep. They might focus on me. But I think they're... Yeah, they, they swapped target already. No! <laughs> Durant, no! I gotta remind myself of this very, very often. Let's stun this little one. And just book. Okay. Oh. Hello. Uh, let's turn on some defenses here to minimize the lightning damage. Yeah. That was why. Get some extra accuracy. Where are you going? He's going for it there, but... He's going all the way around. Let's actually just grab him here. Okay. Uh, let's focus on this one. These are near death, so a lot will kill them with just AOE damage. How may I help? Stop it! Yeah. Well, <laughs> just like I said. Okay. Oh, we dominated that one. <laughs> Apparently Kana is the, the main tank now. Come here. Come on. Ka Dude. Oh <gasps> okay. Okay. I was I was worried there for a second. Especially if you went to call vampires. There you go. Okay, so with these I'm fine. If secrets whisper here, I with vampires I'm not so fine. Well, let's hunt. But he did spoil that there was gonna be some fighting over there because he was trying to move woo, toward enemies. Gold. And what else do we have? Careful. No, 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 no. Okay, okay, okay. Let, let's back up. Hey. I actually feel that if I wanted to, I could clear out this entire level. Uh, but there is a very large fight at the end. And honestly, I don't feel particularly safe doing this without some protection from domination. I think there are some items you can consume, like foods or potions, that will make you immune. So I am gonna, I am gonna look for that instead of just blindly going in and getting myself killed. Okay, so we are back in level 7. Ech, there's no shortcut here though. The shortcut might actually be on, on the 8th level <laughs> and I just 
didn't see it. So we're gonna have to walk a few of these levels. At least up to level 5. Okay, so level 6, let's go. I have to purchase some camping supplies, I have to rest. I might also sell some stuff. But my next objective doesn't have vendors. The next area I want to go to, I mean. The master staircase, that's what I want. And we're gonna go into, the, into an area that I forgot for a little while, but thankfully I remembered in the last episode. Which has some more questing and cool stuff to show. The glossary contains definitions and explanations. The stones and the spirits in this place have begun to heal. I'm also going to check if that there's something in my stash from the quest we've been doing. Yep. Ah, right. Ooh, a potion of iron skin. Lovely. Take that. And the rest are ingredients with the exception of this. Uh, only three uses, which I, which I don't like. And just heals. Some endurance. Eh. I mean, I, I guess I can keep it on me if I need a an extra heal or something. Okay, so you can just store the traps. I think that's fine. And... I have pretty much everything I need. Yeah, I'm gonna give you one of these as well. Okay. So, first of all, we're gonna rest, and I think the bonus I want is probably Perception. I don't think I'm gonna need the extra mechanics for where I'm going, so let's go with Perception. And I, yeah, I might give a, I might make a, a quick stop to pick up the camping supplies. Mm. Is there anything in construction? Yes, it is. Okay, so I have to wait. Okay, so I want to go to Stormwall Gorge. Uh, maybe I'll make a pit stop. Eh, I'll, I'll just go. I'll just go. It's fine. We are rested, we have one stack of camping supplies, and we're probably gonna find more camping supplies where we're going, so... Dunrit Sion has arrived seeking employment. I think this sucks, right? It's the... the guy I can... yeah. I don't want to lose prestige for extra security, so let's just go. And this is the place that I wanted to go to. But I, I forgot for a while. <laughs> okay. So here, I think, is the entrance. The starlight illuminates a pattern in the ground. You kneel to get a better look. The stone here has been carved with a few simple shapes. A small circular indentation marks the center and a much larger circle surrounds it. You see what appears to be writing above the two circles. So we've actually seen this already and the only option we have left is wait a while. Because I think one of these says... Um, yeah, since we can read in Gwithen, Ruin, uh, in Gwithen Runes from the Heritage Hill quest, we can see here that all things end only to continue anew. Enter now at dusk that we may all experience a new dawn. And I think the idea is to wait until it's dusk and then we can enter. You wait for a few hours watching as the stars wink and glow overhead. Uh, wait some more? Oh, no. Did I? Am I missing something? Keeping an eye out. Maybe I'm missing something. Huh. Wait. Wait, wait, wait. The bright sun casts its light on a pattern in the ground. You need to get a better look. Uh. Wait a while. 
You wait for a few hours marking the sun's journey across the sky. So now it should be dusk. Is this dusk? Still cannot enter. Uh, maybe I'm just skipping time for no reason <laughs> and I'm missing... Well, uh, wait a while longer. You wait for a few hours marking the sun's journey across the sky. Uh, well, we've built a hedge maze. That's something. So I'm gonna start building this. Or, no, I actually want the merchants. They can be useful. Okay. Okay, so I am messing this up. Because... Uh, what what time is it? Yeah, so it's... It's 2 o'clock, 2 p.m. He left. I don't care. And it's now 6 o'clock. So this should be dusk, right? Or at least in one hour it should be dusk. I'm guessing dusk is like 7 p.m., 8 p.m. Or is dusk like pitch black darkness? I don't get it. It's even glowing. I realize I'm making a fool of myself right now and I apologize, but... <laughs> I don't just want to go into a wiki and figure this out. I want to try and understand. So... In, enter now at dusk. Do I have to click these again? No. Um, okay, so... Yeah, it just says the same thing. Well, I, I don't know, maybe, uh, maybe this is for later? I thought I could come here now. Yeah, because what this does is there's, a, there's this flooded area right here. And then I believe that all of this lower area is also flooded. This is where we picked up Hiravius, our druid. But yeah, we... Can we go down? We, we cannot go down, right? Can we? Oh, okay, yeah, no. So, right, this is flooded. But I was under the impression that that was going to be the way to clear the flood. Well, apparently it is not. I have learned something new. My apologies for those of you who, who know how to do this and I'm just acting like a fool. Uh, so, well, I don't think there's much left for us to do then, besides continuing our main quest. We have done a lot of things. Let's, let's be clear about that. I still haven't found the hilt. Uh, we have to wait for this. Yeah, we have to wait for all of these things, pretty much. Dream and memory, we also have to wait. This is the grieving mother, yeah. We have to wait, we have to wait, and we have to wait. Okay, well, yeah, so then the only thing that's missing is to continue our main quest, the Hermit of Hadrat House. I don't believe I'm missing anything else. There is one exception to what I'm saying here, and that is the... Um, where is this? The Warden's Lodge, because this is actually a pretty cool uh, building that's kind of hidden uh, between the other ones. And I'll just read this. The Warden's Lodge watches over the wilds near the Stronghold. Upgrading the Lodge will grant a bonus to survival skill upon resting at Bright Hollow, and this is the, the default thing, as well as provide access to the Warden, who offers high-level bounties. And this is the cool stuff about the Warden's Lodge. So, at most, I might not continue the main quest just yet, Simply in order to... Simply in order to pick up uh, some bounties before moving ahead with the main quest. There's a couple of bounties which are easily done, and then there are some bounties which are... 
gosh darn insane <laughs> in terms of difficulty. But for right now, I'm only going to the Goose and Fox. I'm going to be picking up an additional camping supply. Or additional camping supplies. I don't think that there's a, s a singular thing for that. Was this here before? Dude, sometimes my brain just short circuits. I don't remember seeing these ghosts here. But they're all like the optional NPCs. Okay. How do you do? Maybe when I when I blew up the machine, these souls appeared or something. Uh, okay, so I want refreshments, and I just want this. Just one trade. There we go. Uh, I might just sell some stuff since I'm here. Yeah, why not? Uh, we have a fine brigandine, which we have one already. I can sell that. Sure. I don't actually have a lot of a lot of things to sell. I could sell this, however. This is fireballs, health and health. I want to keep that. Oh, right. So sell value high to low and i want to keep one of the fine large shields but i can sell all of this stuff here okay and just sell all of this crap oh god we have three pages of this my friends eh, you know how the last time went there's a lot of clicking it is worth it Kinda. Okay. Woof! We are once again clear of rubbish in our inventory. Okay, so I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna park my characters close to a, a area exit. And I will think about what I want to do. I'm, I'm thinking maybe do like one or two bounties and then continue on with the main quest. Eh, I'll decide. So I am going to stop the episode here in order to think about that. I wasn't counting on not having this area available uh, for the episode. I was This was my main goal, was to come over here, clear this area, which is interesting and cool, and then go and continue the main quest or the bounties. I kind of got lost on that, given that it did not work the way I intended. Um, but yeah, so this will be the end of this episode. As always, my friends, um, I hope you guys are enjoying the run. If you have any questions or suggestions, leave a comment below. If you are liking the content, consider subscribing for more. The videos are coming out every single day, and it's also a free and easy way to support the channel. And I hope to see you all in the next episode. Until then, stay safe, everyone.